Hello and welcome back. So in 1817 a woman wrote to the British royal family saying that she was the biological daughter of Prince Henry, Duke of Cumberland, who was a brother of King George III, by a woman called Mrs Olive Payne. She commissioned King George on the matter and she asked the Prince Regent, the future King George IV, for financial help. But who was this woman? She was Olivia Sears. She was born on the 3rd of April 1772 in Warwick and was the daughter of a house painter called Robert Wilmot. When she was 10 years old, Olivia was sent to live with her uncle James Wilmot in Barton on the Heath and in 1789 she then rejoined her father in London. In London, Olivia studied art with John Thomas Sears, who was marine painter to the king, and they married in 1791 and had two daughters together. Now, Olivia and John weren't all that great with money, they were fairly reckless with it, and both of them ended up in debtor's prison. They ended up separating and Olivia moved in with an artist called George Fields and they had a son together in 1804. Olivia then set about doing some painting, writing a novel, writing a few poems and also a memoir on her uncle James. In this memoir of her uncle, Olivia sought to prove that her uncle was the author of the book Letters to Genius, which was a collection of private and public letters criticising the government of King George III. So that was a little bit of background on Olivia and now we're up to the time when she wrote her letter to the royal family. Now the woman she mentioned in it that was her mother Mrs Olive Payne was actually her aunt. So in her first letter she wrote that she was the biological daughter of the Duke of Cumberland and Miss Olive Payne. But in 1820, when King George III died, she changed her story. Olivia was now calling herself Olive and she changed her story to say that her uncle James Wilmot had secretly married Princess Poniatowski, who was the sister of King Stanislaus II of Poland. And that their daughter that they had together had married the Duke of Cumberland in 1767. So Olive said that she was the only daughter from this marriage between the Duke of Cumberland and the daughter of James Wilmot and the princess and that her mother had died of a broken heart when the Duke of Cumberland bigamously married Anne Horton. Olive said that she was taken from her mother when she was 10 days old and substituted for the stillborn child of Robert Wilmot. She then claimed that King George III knew all about this and gave her £5,000 and a yearly pension of £500 for life. As well as this, Olive claimed that she had received support from the King of Poland and that King George III had also made her Duchess of Lancaster in 1773, which meant that she was entitled to all the revenue from the Duchy of Lancaster. She also took on the name of Princess Olive of Cumberland and she put the royal coat of arms on the side of her carriage and she dressed her servants up in royal livery. Now there were some gullible people that did actually believe her claims because she did resemble the Duke of Cumberland quite a bit and also she had some very genuine looking documents to support her claim. And then in 1821, she actually had herself re-baptised as the daughter of the Duke. She then announced her parentage in all the newspapers. Olive then managed to persuade a member of Parliament, Gerald Knoll, to start an inquiry into her claim. But by this time, the royal family had had enough and they were fighting back. They had located Olive's birth certificate and they got a statement from her father, Robert, saying that he was definitely the natural and lawful father of Olive. And they also got a statement off of Princess Panatowski saying that neither her nor any other of King Stalinus's 
sisters had ever been to England. So in 1823, Gerald Knoll gave a speech in Parliament in favour of Olive, but this speech was responded to by the Home Secretary Sir Robert Peel saying that the documents that Olive had were fakes and forgeries and that her story was a complete fabrication. A conclusion was met that Olive's claims were completely false, but luckily for Olive, she did manage to escape prosecution for forgery. Olive then spent the rest of her life in and out of debtors prison and in 1830 she did actually write a pamphlet saying that she was definitely royalty but she died in 1834. Now, after her death, Olive's eldest daughter, Lavinia, kept up her mother's claim, styling herself Princess Lavinia of Cumberland. In 1844, Lavinia tried to take the Duke of Wellington to court for overlooking a bequest of £15,000 from King George III to her mother in his will. The Duke of Wellington had been their executor for the will. And then in 1850, Lavinia published a pamphlet requesting financial aid from Queen Victoria. And later on in 1866, Lavinia asked the Court of Probate to declare her the legitimate grandchild of the Duke of Cumberland. So during the trial for this, Lavinia produced lots of documents to support her claim and a handwriting expert actually testified that the signatures of King George III and James Wilmot were authentic. There was also a testimony saying that the Duke of Kent, who was Queen Victoria's father and also conveniently dead, financially supported Olive and seemed to believe her story. In some of the documents, King George III had signed his name George Gillep and William Pitt and Lord Brooke had both signed their names as Earl before they had even become earls. So in the end, the court of probate found that Lavinia was not the granddaughter of the Duke of Cumberland. And luckily, like her mother, she also did not get prosecuted for forgery. Lavinia continued to write pamphlets saying about who she was, and her case was actually reheard in the House of Lords. But she died in 1871, her claims still unrecognised. But was what Olive and Lavinia are saying actually true? And if it wasn't true, why would they say it? Could it have been that Olive was just a fantasist and just made up this story and then just started really believe in it herself. Maybe because she was just fed up with having no money, with being in debt for prison, maybe she thought that this might be a good way to be able to get a bit of money. Or maybe she was actually the biological daughter of the Duke of Cumberland. Who knows? What do you ones think anyway? Do you reckon it was all made up or do you reckon it could have been real? Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.